In the previous video of this series, I showed you how to create a custom theme for the scheduler component of Rad Scheduler. Having done that, we still need to make sure to create a theme specific to the Edit Appointment dialog that is displayed when users create appointments. Let's begin. So to start, I'm just going to open up our previous theme we created last time. So I'll go to File, Open Package, and I'm going to open up the Smoke theme. I'm just going to take just a second to load it up. And as you can see, here is the Rad Scheduler component that we themed last time. Uh, but if we select an area and go to New Appointment, as you can see, the Rad Scheduler actually contains an Edit Appointment dialog. And we have not yet created a theme specific to this dialog. And as you can also see, the Edit Appointment dialog actually consists of more than one single component. It has a Rad form. It contains various text boxes, drop-down boxes, date time pickers, and even the Rad button. So we're actually going to need to create themes specific to each of these controls to create an overall theme for the Edit Appointment dialog. So to start, I'm actually going to create a theme for Rad Form in this particular video. So let's begin doing that. So I'm going to click Cancel. And if we scroll up, we can browse to the Rad Form control. And as you can see, here it is. I'll go ahead and resize the window a little bit. And let's resize the control and the designer so you can see it a little bit better. And it currently has its default theme. So let's go ahead and make it fit within the theme that we're trying to create, which is like a kind of a darker grayish smoky type theme. So let's begin doing that. So I'm going to expand into Rad Form. And as you can see, here are all of the various elements that make it up. And the first thing we need to do is change the background color. So the background color is actually going to be in Rad Form. And then the element is going to be Root Rad Element. And then I'm going to check this checkbox to show me only the applied repositories. And as you can see, a repository has not been applied uh, for setting the background color. So if we expand into root rad element, as you can see, a background color is set here. And if you remember from the previous video, this little box uh, right here that has the black outline around it indicates that this property is applied locally here in this property grid. If you see a property that has that uh, similar box but without a black outline, that actually means it's applied via a repository. So since our background color is applied locally, we'll need to change it locally. Or if we want, we could also just create a new repository. But I'm just going to change it locally. So here is my colors.txt file that I created last time that just has the various colors that I've been using. And so I'm going to go with my background color. So I'll copy that. And let's just paste it into the background color property of Rad Form. And as you can see, it's switched to a nice darker gray color. So now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do is change the border. So if you uh, look closely, you can probably see that the border is actually kind of a, a darker blue color. Well, I want to change that to a dark gray color. And we're going to do this for both the active and non-active states of the window. So that would be like, say for example, if you watch the actual Visual Style Builder window itself, currently it's in its active state. But if I click out of the window, notice how the title bar went a little bit lighter color of gray and the outside outline probably changed a little bit too. So that's what we're going to be changing here. We're going to be changing the outline and we're going to make it uh, a slightly different color based on whether the window is active or not. So let's start out by changing the not active state. So to do that I'm actually going to come over here to rad form element and then I'm going to select form outer border and then here is the default state of the control which is not active and as you can see there's also a state for the control for is form active so let's start by changing the not active state so I'm going to expand into this and as you can see it currently has a kind of a dark blue outline well let's change this to my one of my border colors here in my colors.txt file so I'll go ahead and paste that in there and as you can see it's kind of a lighter gray color I actually want this to be a little bit darker so we'll move this down a little bit and here is the color I want for the outline of my rad form when it's not active. So I'll click OK. And the next thing I want to change is the outline color when the form is active. So I'll switch over to that element state. 
and let's jump into the repository specific to that and I'm actually just going to change this to be black so I'll select that and click OK and OK again and as you can see that actually was not applied here in the preview window uh, because this preview window is actually showing what the form would look like in its non-active state so once we actually test this rad form we should be able to see this outline uh, when we select the rad form and it goes to its active state so the next thing that we need to change on the rad form is going to be the title bar. Well, as you can see here, there's actually an element specific to the title bar contained under the rad form element. This actually is not what we're going to be changing. I'm actually going to switch over and there's actually a control specific to the title bar. So if I scroll down a little bit, as you can see, there's actually a rad title bar control. And this is what we're going to change to change the title bar of the rad form. So let's start by changing its background color. So I'm going to select the title bar element. And as you can see, there is a title fill primitive. And this also contains a active and non-active state. So let's start by changing the non-active fill color. So I'm going to jump into the repository for that. And as you can see, it's just a gradient. So Let's go ahead and use one of the gradients uh, that I've created earlier. So I'll paste that in there. I'll paste the second color in. Oop, and again. And then finally, I'll paste the top color in again. And click OK. And this is going to be the color when uh, the window is not active. So let's set it to be a little bit darker when the form is active. So I'm going to switch over to the active repository and jump into that. And let's start with our base colors here. I'm just going to paste these in. And let's go paste in the second color. And now I'm just going to jump into the color picker and let's make these a little bit darker. So I'll make that a little darker. I can actually make this a little bit darker too. And now I'll just paste these or copy and paste these uh, to finish off my gradient and click OK. And now that we've done that, I also need to make sure to change the font color. As you can see, the font color is currently kind of a light blue color. Well, I, I actually want that to be a dark gray color as well. So I'm going to switch over to title caption. And let's go back to the, the uh, non-active state of our title bar. And as you can see, there is a non-active title bar text repository. So I'm just going to expand into that. And let's change the for color of this to be a, a kind of a darker shade of gray. So I'll click OK and OK again. And now this is what it's going to look like in the non-active state. So now that we've fixed the font, you probably still are wondering how we need to change the border color because the borders are actually kind of kind of a very, very light gray on the top on the top three sides and then on the bottom side it's kind of a light blue color. Well to change that I'm actually going to jump into the title border primitive and as you can see there is a title bar active border so let's jump into that and I'm going to start or well actually as you can see the box style for this is four borders and that means it's using these four colors down here because it's setting a different color for each of the borders so I'm going to scroll down in the properties window and let's uh, set those over here so I'm actually going to set the uh, three upper borders, the left, right, and the top border, I'm going to set those to be black. So let's go ahead and s select black for the left border. And then for the right border, we'll set it to black as well. And then finally, for the top one, that will also be black. And now for this lower border, as you can see, it's actually got a bottom color, and it's using a bottom shadow color as well. So we're going to set both of those. So I'm actually going to use uh, my border here for my text file so let's copy that I'm gonna paste that in let's just paste that right there and then I'm gonna paste in the inner border for the regular color so now that we've done that I can click OK and here is what our title bar will look like now and one final thing I want to show you is as you can see the buttons of the title bar are still kind of a blue color as well so we're going to need to change those. So let's change the close button. So I'm going to switch to the title bar close button here in the control structure and as you can see uh, this actually consists of a few different images. Here's the default image and then there's a mouse over image 
and then there is a mouse down image. So we're going to need to change each of these to be different images. So let's start with the default image. So I'm going to expand into the repository for it. And as you can see, I'll just need to click this and I'll have to browse to a new image file. And you'll have to create these uh, either in your own paint program or maybe you can find uh, icons that will do this online. Uh, but I've actually created some in advance, so I'm going to use these. So for my normal close button, I'm going to select this and click OK. As you can see, it's switched to that dark gray color now. So let's also do this for my mouse over. So I'm going to switch to that element state, jump into this repository, and let's change the, the uh, image for this to my closed mouse over picture. And then finally, for the mouse down image, let's expand into it one more time. And I'm going to choose the close mouse down image and click OK. And as you can see, I can't actually test this here in the title bar preview. But if I jump back over to my rad form, and I'm actually going to click to maximize it, that allows me to begin testing this in the preview. And as you can see, uh, when I am not hovering over it, it's in its default state. And when I hover over the close button, it turns to its kind of a gray hover state. And finally, if I click on it, that's the mouse down state. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up theming the rad form. And when we return, we'll take a look at how we can actually use this inside of an application. So as you can see, here is my completed theme for rad form. And now that it's complete, let's go ahead and take a look at it in an application. So I'm actually going to go up here to file and we'll save as, and I'm just going to save it back as my smoke theme package. And now let's switch over to Visual Studio. And if we jump into the main form for this application I have here, as you can see, it just contains a rad scheduler, a rad scheduler navigator, and all of this is just placed inside of a rad form. So to begin using the theme in our application, I'm actually going to come over here to my file explorer, browse through my custom themes folder where I saved it out, and I'm just going to drag it and drop it into my application, and we'll select it. And I need to make sure to change its build action to embedded resource. And now I'm going to jump into the code behind, into the main form load event, and I'm going to type theme resolution service dot load package resource. And then we'll specify the location of our resource, which is test application dot smoke theme dot tssp. And then finally, we need to set the theme on our application. So we'll say theme resolution service dot application theme name equals smoke theme. So now that we've done that, I'm going to click run and we can take a look at our theme in this application. So here's the application and one thing you'll probably notice immediately is that our main form has been themed. Uh, but if we select an area of Rad Scheduler and go to New Appointment, as you can see, the Edit Appointment dialog has also been themed. Uh, but let's say we don't want our entire application to be themed uh, based on our, our changes. Let's say I only want Rad Scheduler to be themed, so I don't want my main form to have uh, this color. So let's switch back over to our code behind once again. And in order to do this, I, I actually need to set the application theme name uh, on the actual rad scheduler control rather than on the theme resolution service. When I set it on the theme resolution service, it's going to apply the theme to everything in the application. So we don't want that. So I'm going to comment that out. And let's instead say rad scheduler. And then we're going to say theme name equals smoke theme. And now let's run the application one more time. And as you can see, it did not apply the theme to my main form, but the rad scheduler still gets the theme. So now if I right click and create a new appointment, as you can see, this rad form has our new theme, but the main form does not. So we can isolate where we use this theme in our application. So as you can see, the only control we've themed is the rad form. Uh, the rad label, the, all the text boxes and everything still need to be themed. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. We're going to take a look at how we can create a theme for Rad text box that we can use within our edit appointment dialog. I hope to see you then and thanks for watching.